Producers and consumers have different risks when we talk about sampling. This lecture will explain the difference between the consumer producer risks and the relationship between the two, and also look at determining acceptance quality level, AQL, and limiting quality, LQ. In sampling, there's a consumer producer relationship. And unfortunately, this involves a conflict between what the consumer wants and what the producer wants. So think about a batch of food product. If you're the producer, you want all of the conforming lots accepted. You don't want to throw out any good product by mistake because of what your sample is telling you. So you want to get as much out the door as possible. If you're a consumer, you want your product coming in to be as perfect as possible because you do not want to mess up your own product. So you want all non-conforming lots not accepted regardless of how many conforming lots are not accepted along with that. Unfortunately, only an ideal OC curve seen here can meet these needs. So we see a very sharp drop off between 100% acceptance and 0% acceptance at a certain percentage non-conforming down here. OC curves for food products generally do not look like this. The only way you can have an OC curve is if you have 100% inspection, which is not practical for food products. When we talk about producer's risk, or alpha, this is the probability of not accepting a conforming lot. So you're throwing out good product by mistake. Our OC curves are written in terms of probability of acceptance. So when we calculate the PA or probability of acceptance using producer's risk, we have to subtract it from 1. So if our alpha in this case is 0 0.05, that's the standard alpha, then we have a probability of acceptance of 0.95 or 95%. So we're accepting 95% of our conforming lots. We're throwing out 5% of them because we're not sure if they're conforming or not based on our sampling plan. The producer's risk goes along with the acceptance quality limit, or AQL. And so the AQL is the minimum tolerable process average when you have a continuing series of lots sampled for acceptance. So you have lot one sampled, and then two, and then three, and so on with your sampling plan. The AQL is the numerical definition of your acceptable lot. The percentage non-conforming at your AQL corresponds to a percent acceptance of 1 minus alpha times 100%. So you would read over from the 95% if your alpha is 0 0.05 and then down to the percent non-conforming to get what your percent non-conforming is at your AQL. Now let's talk about consumers. The consumer's risk, or beta, is the probability of accepting a non-conforming lot. So this is the consumer getting a lot that is actually bad, where the sample told you it was good. Consumer's risk is usually to be assumed to be 0.1, or about 10%. You don't need to convert 10% because your chart is already in terms of percent accepted, and so you're talking about 10% accepted by mistake. So do not subtract beta from 1 when you're doing your calculations for limiting quality, or LQ. Your limiting quality is your percent non-conforming in a lot that has a low probability of acceptance. So you might accept this by mistake based on your sample. The percent non-conforming at your LQ corresponds to the probability of acceptance of your beta times 100%. So if your beta is 0.1, then this would be your percent non-conforming if you read over from the 10% line on your y-axis. Let's take a look at an example problem. So here we have a sample OC curve for a single acceptance plan. We know that our producer's risk alpha is 0.05 and our consumer's risk beta is 0.1. So we want to figure out what the AQL and the LQ are on this chart. Let's see how to do that. So here we have lines corresponding to the AQL and the LQ. Let's look at our producer's risk first. Here our alpha is 0 0.05, so we have to subtract that from 1 to get our percent accepted. That's 0.95 or 95%. When we read over on our 
95% acceptance line to our OC curve. We have a point right here and we drop down and we read that just above 4% non-conforming correspond to the AQL. So our AQL here is about 4%. If we want to look at our LQ, we use a beta of 0.1. So we read here on our 10% line, remember we're already in percent acceptance so we do not need to subtract from 1. Then we read down to see that our LQ is about 16%. So we have a pretty high percent non-conforming uh, in our consumer's risk of accidentally accepting a non-conforming lot. One more thing to point out with AQL. Our AQL is set so that it is less than or equal to C, our acceptance criteria for percent non-conforming lots. If our C was set to 2, for example, so we could have 2% non-conforming or fewer, then our AQL, our acceptance quality limit, is above C, and so we are basically saying that we can accept lots that's outside of our acceptance criteria. So when you're putting your sampling plans together, make sure your AQL is less than C. We can use producers and consumers risk to actually construct sampling plans. Let's say we have an AQL that we want to be 3% and an LQ we want to be 20%. We can construct an OC curve that goes through both of those points here and here. Then that will set our C that will also set our sample number n. So we can use acceptance quality limit and limiting quality to actually create a sample plan. We can also say, all right, we want to set the acceptance quality limit at a certain percent and then take a look at different sampling plans that fall through that certain percentage, looking at the differences in sample number and the number non-conforming we can have before we reject our sample. So these are valuable tools to use when constructing your OC curves for your sampling plan.